Hello everyone, welcome to my first tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make something like this. I'll show you right now. Basically I'm just going to show you how to make an overlay yourself. Just if episode doesn't have one for a certain background, you can cut it out and use it yourself. So, but before I'm going to start with the actual cutting overlays, I want to tell you something about the program I use because I use Photoshop. If you're looking for a free alternative to Photoshop, I can recommend GIMP to you, which is pretty similar to Photoshop, but obviously has less features, but that one can be really useful. So keep in mind that this video is actually about the basics of making overlays and using Photoshop, because I wanted to do something for the people that don't have any experience in any of this. So firstly, I'm just going to explain something about Photoshop and its features itself. So if you don't want to see all that, just skip to this point in the video and we'll get straight to the overlay cutting. So let's open up a new file. You can do it like this or you can just use the shortcut on your uh, keyboard like doing Ctrl N and you will get here too. Uh, you can choose the size and everything, we're just gonna go ahead with the default one. Then, uh, the thing you really need to know before starting out using Photoshop for overlays is that it works with layers. Let's make a new layer here. This is the, um, the box where you can see all the layers. Now, if I were to draw something on this layer, whatever, I'm using a pen tablet by the way, then you would not actually draw it directly onto the background so the background won't be affected by what you draw on this layer so you can remove this if you want now if you were to draw it directly onto the background it's attached like that all right i'm just using the shortcut for undo by the way you can also do it over here So, uh, there's a lot of tools in Photoshop and obviously I'm not going to tell you all of them because it would take me literal ages, so I'm just going to tell you the ones I actually use to make my overlays and the ones I'm going to use in the rest of this video, so there we go. If I were to draw something, I'm just going to draw something, here's a brush tool, I just need like an actual object to do stuff with. So. The first uh, tool over here is the move tool, which basically makes it possible to move everything around like you wish. The second one is the selection tool, and I'm now using the alt button. It, you hold it to change this because you can use uh, several shapes of selection tools. This makes it possible to select whatever, obviously, in this layer still, and then you can move it around or you can change its size or whatever, but I'm not gonna show you that right now because that's not what this video is about. Let's see, this one's actually very important for making overlays in my opinion, because I use it most often. It's actually the lasso tool and this is the default one, which makes it possible to make selections in any shape you want. Yeah? But the one I use is this one. This one makes it possible to make, to draw lines like this, like just clicking. One other thing you can use to make overlays if you have like, say an image with a white background and there's one thing on it and you want to cut that thing out but the rest around it is white you can use this one, which basically selects one color or anything around the object you want. Okay, for this I will need a basic shape, like this, and then I'll just add a red background, like this. With the paint bucket tool, by the way, it's of no use for overlays anyway, but and then you can use this one to select or this piece or the entire red. And you press delete on your keyboard. There we go. You deleted it. Woo! Good job. 
All right, uh, another thing I can tell you about is the eraser, which is obvious what it does, but well, you can erase anything with it and you can also change uh, the size of the brush because it's basically like a brush but an eraser, yes. And then it does this. It's a little wonky though. This is a brush that's more soft than the other one, so doesn't make it as fast as this one. I think that's basically it for everything you need to know for this tutorial. Alright, so let's start with a background from episode. Uh, let's go for the hotel room one. Mm, this one. So, you just want to copy it. Sorry, it's in Dutch. <laughs> And then you make a new file by doing Ctrl N or doing the thing I just said over here. And it will automatically copy the size of the actual image you just copied as well. Ctrl V to paste it. There we go, everybody knows, I think. Notice how it's on top of the background right now. So it's a separate layer. If you do something on here, it doesn't affect this background at all. Now um, I'd like to cut out this bed so that somebody can actually stand behind the bed. I'm just gonna do this first because I don't want to mess with the actual background and I want to check if it actually fits so uh, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Now we got this on this layer only. So let's make this transparent. So the thing uh, I want to do now is cut this out like here. And the thing I usually use for this is the... How do you actually say it? It's like the poly... poly good, I don't even know. It's a lasso tool. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just gonna go... Well, start over here. Because I would like... A character to stand behind this all. You just click it and you just follow it along the lines as closely as possible and if it's a little wonky after it doesn't matter because you can always clean it up and yeah I will show you afterwards. Look how I just made a mistake it doesn't matter you can just leave it like that or change it up whatever you want. Okay, I'm not gonna talk now, this is really boring. I'll just speed it up for you. <laughs> also, I rarely do the whole thing at once because sometimes you accidentally click twice and if you click twice, the entire selection closes to the beginning point. So we definitely don't want that. So we're just gonna go and do this. Oh dear, I should have zoomed out. I'm sorry. So, and we double tap to close it. Uh, I press delete on the right layer. Bye bye. I can also just remove like large parts by doing this or do whatever you prefer but sometimes I like to actually erase it with the eraser sometimes I just use the selection tool to do it. Now um, things like this sometimes I don't I can't really see if I did it right. Oh see I messed up big time Then you just Use the background or even better Change it into like another color because Then you can see oh this one doesn't work for this one It's better to just keep it white, but you can change it if uh, there's like a dark spot and maybe The red works better for you but for these things, I actually like to use the eraser because, yeah, I just prefer using this because I have a pen tablet. So here's the thing. When you see this background, you see only around this spot people will 
actually walk around so it's really no use to cut all this out because no one will ever be behind there because there's a wall so I mostly just leave it like this honestly maybe just take this out but whatever this this is all right to do so now for saving it obviously the background should be transparent otherwise it will just show up as white and you can't even save a file this big so always make sure to do this if you don't see the little squares here then you're probably doing something wrong i just want to clean up this first all right let's not be a perfectionist for once i already am but <laughs> Okay, so now if you want to save this, we go to save as. I have no idea what folder I'm in. I don't even care. I'm just going to save it here. Make sure it's a PNG. This means transparent background. And authors will obviously know this because you can't upload an overlay that's JPEG. So uh, let's name it bed. There we go don't have to change anything about this okay there we go overlay has been made so simple actually and the thing is if you save it like this with the entire background still around it like the size you can just add it to your background writing in zone one add layer whatever and you don't even have to scale it or you don't even have to shift it shift it to another position it will just be in place like you need it to so there we go. So that's it you guys. I really hope I could help you with this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions you can just message me on Instagram or ask below in the comments that's right with me as well. Leave a like if this video helped you and you can always subscribe because I will be making more videos like this in the future. See you in the next one. Bye!